everybody, it's Sierra, the Artsy Badger. And first things first, I'd like to apologize for this video going up late, but I'm really excited for today's video because we're filling the last page of my sketchbook. So I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting super excited for Inktober. If you follow me on Instagram, I posted this morning another sort of Inktober prep sketch. And I've been really inspired by a, another artist named Just Another Ada. Ada? <laughs> but anyway, I'll leave a link to her Instagram and YouTube channel down below. But pretty much the premise of this video is one, finishing my sketchbook, which is crazy. I finished it so fast. I've just been so inspired by the sketchbook. The paper has been so nice. And I really love just having a single page to fill with whatever it is I want and not worrying about making it a collage of things. That being said, this sort of style of drawing right here is very much a collage of things. And I'm really excited for working more in this style because I think it will combine my love for the aesthetic of a sort of scrapbook style sketchbook but at the same time keeping everything very on theme and uniformed. <laughs> I'm hoping that through this Inktober, I'll be able to take the inspiration I have around this style and just sort of discover my own style of using it. I think it already shows a bit that I do not do things exactly the way she does, but you can also tell where I'm pulling my inspiration from. And in case you guys haven't figured out already, the theme of this page is snail. And that is from the prompt list by Furry Little Peach. I have been seriously struggling to decide which prompt list I wanna use this Inktober. I used a different artist list last year. I used Adelaide Arts prompt list and it was great. It was so much fun, but I think I want to bring things back to kind of the traditional Inktober prompt list and push myself that way. And I want to use each word and create sort of a collage of what that word makes me feel or think of. And I think that this style of sketchbook spread will work really well for that. And as you may have noticed already on my Instagram, I have been super inspired by Posca pens lately. I've been really enjoying using them and I just got a bunch of new colors, so I'm really excited. And to be honest, I was pleasantly surprised how well this paper took to Posca pens. If any of you have tried Posca pens before, you will know that Posca pens just eat up the paper. And I actually found that this paper held up pretty well. It didn't completely crumble underneath the pressure of the Posca pen. And I really try to color in sections and not rub over the same place twice because that will really cause the paper to disintegrate and start to peel up. So try to use as few strokes as possible if you're using Posca pens on any kind of paper. I feel like my thoughts are so jumbled. I don't remember what I was talking about before. I'm still trying to decide how many different sort of color palettes I want to use for Inktober. I think I wanna keep it fairly limited, but also have it vary day by day. I don't want a different color palette every day, I don't think. But if I do, I'll probably use three sort of general color palettes and then mix and match them as needed. Cause I really do like a limited color palette. I will say that this one might have been a little too limited <laughs> and mostly because it's all very cool toned. And I really like that. I never thought I would say that a cool toned color palette was not my jam. <laughs> But the thing is, is part of what makes Ada's, I have to go look up how she pronounces her name. I just did the thing that I should have done at the beginning of the video and looked up how she pronounces her name. It's Ada. And so the way that Ada does her spreads, she definitely has a lot of contrasting colors. And I think that's what makes her work so successful. I did that a lot better on the post that I put up on Instagram that is more just generally Halloween themed rather than trying to follow an actual prompt. 
But for this one, I kept everything in sort of a similar color family because I thought I would like that better. But turns out I didn't. <laughs> that is the one thing I regret from this spread, but I still really like it a lot and it just has me that much more hyped for Inktober. So alongside the Posca pens, I'm using Copic markers because I think the sort of translucency of the Copic markers versus the opaqueness of the Posca pens really works well together. And here last minute I decided to add a gray tone in because I just felt like leaving the spots on the mushroom white was not going to work very well. And this whole page was just an experiment anyway to learn what I like and don't like as far as color palettes go. And most importantly, it was to see if I can push myself to create an entire spread just based off of one word. The word was snail, as I said before, and so I decided to do a lot of things garden related because when I think of snails I think of how they destroy gardens as well as that's where you see snails just in your garden. <laughs> that's why the leaves in the middle portion of this spread have little bite marks in them because that's what snails do. And then I went in with this Muji pen in a teal color and gave everything an outline. And I think this really brings the piece together. It adds definition to things that were kind of being lost into the background. I do really regret what I do here with the pot. So I was trying to limit my color palette as much as I could, but in retrospect, I really should have just grabbed a different color purple and used that to shade the pot because I tried to shade it with the pen and it just looks completely different than everything else in the drawing. It doesn't look clean, it looks sketchy. Not like sketchy dangerous, but sketchy like sketching in your sketchbook <laughs> and I just don't like it but again this was sort of a prep for Inktober spread it's not actually one of my official Inktober pieces I actually have a whole new sketchbook just for this upcoming Inktober and I'm so excited to start it I also end up doing another whoopsie here, adding lines to the watering can. It just looked really plain to me for some reason. Anyway, what's done is done. You live and you learn. And as I've said probably a million times in this video, ultimately, I really like the way it turned out. I hope you guys do too. Let me know if you guys are participating in Inktober, and if so, what prompt list you're gonna follow. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in a couple weeks.